I, th I thought it was a very good conversation. Um, I actually arrived at 8 o'clock uh, to first have a meeting with one of the collective bargaining units that asked me to come early. Um, and listen, this, these are tough conversations. Uh, whenever you talk about budget cuts at the state level, whenever you talk about change, you have to have some tough conversations. But I found that the questions were respectful, that there were people who offered solutions, there were ideas that came across that I had not thought about before. And so I'm, I'm very positive about, about how this conversation went. Could you name one of those ideas for well, to, to be To be interested, um, one of the ideas was, is there a way that we could offer um, in-state tuition to our athletes to be able to recruit more athletes here? We'll look at that. One of them was uh, purely to change the name um, of the uh, teams that we'll be uh, using going forward uh, to, to implement the strategy. And one of the uh, professors said, why don't you change the name from implementation to planning team so it doesn't seem like everything's such a done deal. Made a lot of sense. Sent a direction back to the office that before we send out an email later today, change the name of the team. So I actually listen to folks when they have um, constructive criticism or, or solutions to how we should do things differently. Um, but we can't ignore the fiscal reality that we're living in right now. And to do that would be a mistake because if we don't collectively come together to do, to change the way we do business ourselves, then I fear that we'll get told by the legislature how we should run our own business. Yeah, I'm wanting to make sure that those services that students need and rely on to stay in school and graduate not only are preserved but enhanced. And so whether we're talking about you know, making the buildings safer or cleaner for our students and everybody else, whether we're talking about library hours, whether we're talking about work-study jobs, you know, whatever we're talking about, whether or not, you know, whether it's the interaction between, say, the admissions office and students, um, I hear from students who may be shy about speaking up at a meeting, but will email me or contact me afterwards with some really good suggestions. So I want to make sure that whatever we do, and I know that Southern has maintained that motto, students first, but that we remember why we are doing what we are doing, and that's to make sure that we always have students in the forefront of our minds. I think the point I was trying to make, and I always encourage this of, of students, to really get more involved in your community, in your campus community, because um, that'll affect your future. And don't be afraid to have conversations with people about really difficult issues. Um, it's very easy now with social media um, being the rage to hide behind you know, either aliases or um, your, your Facebook pages um, to get um, your, your point of view out there. And so there's, there's less of a constructive dialogue around important issues and more people doing things for attention. Um, you know, I think the recent, the recent case where this gentleman um, shot another gentleman and posted on Facebook is an example of how I think we've gone a little too far and that we can live in a country where we decide issues based on tweets and misinformation and in, in, in some cases just, just lies. That, that's not helpful to our country. It's not setting an example for students and for folks that are gonna be the future of our country. And we should be concerned about the messages that we send to future generations.